That's right. Our focus today, as we enter this critical month of May, with the temperatures rising, is India's power crisis. That is worsening, with several states continuing to claim that they are running out of coal reserves. Haryana, Punjab, Jammu City reeling under four to five hour long power cuts. It's coming at a time when an extreme heat wave is sweeping the country. Typically, a massive blame game is erupting over the crisis. The Delhi and Rajasthan chief ministers have sent SOSs to the center over power crisis, claiming that they are not getting enough supplies. The center, on the other hand, is refuting the claims of coal shortage and saying power plants have enough coal. The states, in many cases, have to simply pay up. Where does the truth lie? Tonight, we will first be talking to the politicians and then to the power experts. It's our top focus, the power crisis facing the country. India is staring at a power crisis as coal reserves in several states are quickly running out. Several states across the country are reeling under long power cuts. In Jammu, people frustrated with power snags and disruption in water supply staged protests. Sir, two projects here were the Bili ke, roshni act ke andar, zameen hai bech karke, wo daaku bahar khage. Kripya line par bani rahi, aapki call, rahab seva pratinidhi ke paas. An India Today reality check showed the calls to Uttar Pradesh helpline number giving little respite. We are in the same helpline number in the office. And this is what I am showing you in the video. This is 1912 office. This is in Lucknow. And we are here that when people dial this number, they are not connected to this number. The power is so cut that what do you tell me? The power is coming, goes, 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 goes. बिजली आती है, जाती है, रात में काटती है, दिन में काटती है, दिन भर बिजली काट रही है समय। पहले से बहुत अच्छी व्यवस्था है। पहले चार घंटे बिजली आती थी, आज कम से कम चौदह घंटे, पंद्रह घंटे बिजली या बारह घंटे मिल रही है। Amid the raging crisis, Home Minister Amit Shah chaired high-level meet on Monday, which was attended by the Power Minister R K Singh and the Coal Minister Prahlad Joshi to discuss coal stock positions. Delhi, the first state to raise an SOS over deepening power crisis said that it only had a day of coal left. Delhi government claimed lack of coordination and appealed to the centre to increase coal allocation to Delhi. In the country, in 16 countries, there are cuts in the coal in the country. There are cuts in some hours, in some places, in some places, in some places, there are no cuts in 20-22 hours. There is no cuts in the country party, in the Punjab, or in the country party, in the country party, in the country party, in the country party. The centre rejected the claims, calling it panic-mongering and bit to mislead by Delhi government. Centre also released the data showing that most power plants have enough coal for five to eight days. Opposition was quick to take on the Modi government amid the crisis. Congress's Rahul Gandhi and SP chief Akhilesh claimed mismanagement by the centre. The prolonged hot spell, lack of rains and rising electricity demands adding to the summer woes. With Samarth Srivastav, Bureau Report, India Today. So let's raise the big question at the very outset. Who is to blame for this power crisis? The centre or the state governments? Did the government, both at the centre and in the states, get their power planning horribly wrong? Peak summer ahead is the worst yet to come. And importantly, what are the solutions? I'll be joined by Siddharth Zarabi, Managing Editor, Business Today TV, Rohan Gupta, Spokesperson of the Congress, and GVL Narsimha Rao, BJP MP. Later, we will be joined by Vinayak Chatterjee, Infrastructure Sector Expert and Chairman, National Infrastructure Council, and Harry Dowell of Director General, Independent Power Producers Association of India. Before I come to my guests, here's a graphic which will tell you about one of the reasons why this country is facing a potential serious power crisis, which is simply the payment crisis. Many experts say the crisis has to do with the payments cycle at the moment. Here's the problem in a nutshell. Distribution companies or discoms in states have accumulated losses worth 5 lakh crore rupees. 
these discoms in turn owe power generating companies or gencos 1.1 lakh crore rupees and these power operate generators owe coal india 12,300 crore rupees let me come to you gbl narsimha rao first because the government seems to be in denial mood you speak to the coal minister prahlad joshi he says there is no uh, coal shortage speak to power minister rk singh he says there is no power crisis and yet the home minister had to hold an emergency meeting today yet the fact is from state after state particularly in north and central india we are receiving reports of power cuts and power shortages someone is not telling the truth to the people of the country is it the ruling bjp sir at the center uh, rajdeep i uh, the power minister sri rk singh was responding to the lies being propagated by the delhi government amadmi party government mm -hmm. uh, which like last year also they were spreading rumors and lies and he said the numbers that they have put out are in fact uh, they, they are not factual mm -hmm. there is enough uh, uh, coal stock within uh, the, the the thermal stations in delhi mm -hmm. so he was referring in the context of certainly delhi mm -hmm. so let's get that clear second the central government has been urging the state governments to import coal to ensure that coal based uh, plants import coal based plants can operate to their full capacity or to an optimum capacity the plant load factor in these uh, import coal based plants is only 66 or 67% okay and the state governments are not willing to import and the central government has also allowed them to mix imported coal to the tune of 10% hiking it from 4% the state government mm -hmm. it is their who have actually been dilly-dallying imports. One reason for that is we can't blame the state governments as well because the import coal prices have shot up four to five times in the last one year. Yes. And obviously, we have to blame the Ukraine, uh, 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 the Russia-Ukraine conflict, mm -hmm. which is certainly responsible for the hike in prices because uh, Russia is the third largest exporter of coal. So we certainly have to look at the, the, the international situation into account. Mm -hmm. And the parties like Rahul Gandhi, who only sees a crisis in power, but he doesn't see a crisis in the Congress party. I think Congress ruled Rajasthan, mm -hmm. reports the highest power crisis in the country today. And let them explain why is it so. Rajasthan has reported a shortfall of 55 million units yesterday or two days ago. And that continues to be the worst performing state. And of the states that won, that, that owe a large amount of money to the coal India, you mentioned 12,000 crores, mm -hmm. four states stand out. These are Maharashtra, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, and, uh, and, uh, and one more UPA rule state. These are the four UPA rule states, which the fourth one is Jharkhand. Yes. Maharashtra, West Bengal, Jharkhand, and Tamil Nadu. They are the they they have really been not paying up their dues to the coal India. Sir, so but the my is, question is, sir, but the problem is you, they is national. You you know you will you are cherry picking 108 yeah. out of 173 plants domestic plus imported coal based plants have coal at critical levels. You at the last minute on Friday had to cancel passenger trains so that the coal could be transported in time. Clearly, the mood of denial was uh, while uh, there are points that you make which surely need to be looked at seriously. There is a question, sir, about this mood of denial. Why doesn't the government accept that there is a crisis? You can only resolve a crisis when you accept there is a crisis. Just as you said, Rahul Gandhi targets the government in, uh, reflexively. The government's reflex reaction is, don't worry, there is no crisis. Where is There is a crisis on the ground. That is the reality. No, Ra Ra Rajdeep, because there is a, a looming crisis, there is a that's the reason why central government has given out advisories we don't want to create simply a panic mm -hmm. you have to act and the state governments here have to act let me tell you the amount of power generation in the state sector mm -hmm. is more than what what is generated in the central government sector the amount of power generated in the private sector is almost twice that of what is generated in the central government sector so it's not entirely in the central government hands okay the Let states me... have to import power. Private sector companies have to import power to run import-based power plants. Let and if me... they don't do it, mm -hmm. because they don't want to, they, they see losing money in the proposition, they can't blame the central government for it. There is enough coal available, but it is available at a very steep cost. Mm -hmm. So the, do the states have the, 
they have to have the uh, uh, capacity to bite the bullet or at least they should own up they cannot blame the central government okay, for let, not importing and not operating their plants let let ron gupta respond ron gupta when i put out those figures at the outset the fact is that many of the state run power plants and this cuts across bjp and Kong opposition ruled states are today running at grave losses there's a cycle as i pointed out where the discoms are running huge losses where the power generating companies in turn are not being paid and they in turn are unable to pay the uh, central coal india so there's a vicious cycle out there to blame solely the government at the center and say this is all because of narendra modi as rahul gandhi did today is a tad unfair this is a crisis that has been building up over the years it's got worse over time because the dues simply are remain unpaid See, Rajdeep, first of all, this is the first government which is in opposition even after being power for eight years in center. This is the first government for all the crises, whether it is power crisis, whether it is inflation, whether it is petroleum prices, whether it is GST, the states are responsible. Because this government time is going in other issues rather than doing governance. Rajdeep, you tell me whether governance is the issue of central government or, or opposition party. Mm -hmm. How can you deny that there is no crisis? This is the first problem with this government. Whether it was COVID or inflation or economy, they have always denied that there is crisis. You know, rightly put that mm -hmm. if, you, if you won't admit crisis, how will you resolve it? So anybody raises question on this government, okay, please at least accept that there is crisis. They are not even ready to do that. That shows that why they are in denial mode. Mm -hmm. See, as, as you rightly put, 108 power plants out of 173 power plants are in serious shortage of coal. It's not in India, there is abundant coal supply. There is absolutely no issue. Let me remind you, in last year, October 2021, mm -hmm. due to unseasonal rains, there was a shortage of uh, coal. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, th there was this kind of situation the central the government has faced. Why they have not learned lessons out of that? IMD has clearly predicted that this monsoon is going to be very, very hot. Why government has not taken uh, that in uh, consideration and planned in advance? Because this government's time, obviously you have 24 hours in day, when mm -hmm. this government is doing all other things, what we see in television, Hindu, Muslim, obviously they won't have time to do management. And when it comes to management, they will blame opposition party. This is not the first... No, but opposition, opposition, opposition ruled states and Rajasthan is a classic example. I have also to answer questions about the manner in which they have handled their power supply. See, Rajdeep, as again I have said, coal management is a central subject, right? It is responsibility of central government. Whoever are states, there are certain states which, which do not have coal supply. They have to manage from other states. There are power plants which are run by state governments. Obviously, it is state government's responsibility. And many governments have raised their issues of, mm -hmm. of, of increasing the coal supply. Do you feel that this government listens to any of the demand? Yesterday, a few days back, PM was talking about you know, reducing uh, VAT on petroleum. Mm -hmm. And they, he is not answering the question that GST of all the state governments have been pending for last so many months. So this Thank is you. the hypocritical government where they do not want to show the right picture where it is their government has completely okay, let, failed as far as uh, management is concerned or governance is concerned. Let, let, let GVL uh, have a response before I go to Siddharth Sarabi. You know, GVL, this will end in the typical political blame game. But at some stage... There will be the buck stops at the center, especially on issues like power supply, buck stops at the center. The inability, I come back to, involve the states in collective decision. We talk about cooperative federalism and yet on issue after issue, we are seeing contentious polarization between the state and the center. That is not going to resolve the problem of the states that are facing a power shortage. This blame game will not resolve the crisis. No, it's, it's not a question of blame game. It's a power supply is a concurrent subject. And states cannot wash off their responsibility at one level. It's so ironical. At one level, they claim central government is trying to, uh, trying to, trying to barge into their territory. But when power supply is, they have a duty, they have a mandate to uh, pro provide power to the people at affordable prices. Mm -hmm. They want to run away from it. Central government, it's not the job of the central government to import coal and supply it to power plants in the states. It is your job. If you have not done your job, you own it up. You okay. cannot indulge in political blame game at the BJP. You cannot target the BJP and shirk your responsibility. Or just say, let us convert all this into central subjects. Let's have a discussion on this. Let's make drinking water, Sir, tali, agriculture, tali power supply. Let us convert all this into the central list. So that states have no responsibility whatsoever. 
you know, it's not about not having any responsibility. It is about accountability. My worry is at the moment there seems to be a perceived lack of accountability. And Siddharth Zarabi, Coal Ministry says, I want you to explain this to our viewers. Coal Ministry says that Coal India Limited has reported an increase of 27.2% in its output in April yes. 22 as compared to the year ago period. So that to that extent, Coal India is saying there is no shortage. And yet emergency services have to be deployed on Friday. 90 passenger trains were cancelled. Now there is talk of many more trains being cancelled so that stocks are replenished. Where is the problem? Somewhere, something within the chain seems to have gone wrong. Uh, uh, Rajdeep, you have asked me several questions. Allow me a little bit uh, of time to quickly respond. Number one, the first fact, on Friday, we had reached our highest ever demand of 207 gigawatt. And as of yesterday, that went down by 14 gigawatt to 193 gigawatt. So, the latest document and this data that I have from the uh, National Load Dispatch Center says that as of 1st May, shortage during the maximum de demand peak hours was in the state of Haryana and in the state of Uttar Pradesh, 345 megawatt and 170 megawatt respectively. As per this data, and there is no other data better than this, there wasn't a shortage during peak hours. Mm -hmm. The reality, Rajdeep, in three bullet points for the benefit of our viewers. Number one, the fact is that many state distribution companies are not buying power from generators. One, because the generators are not uh, uh, willing to extend further lending to them. And second, mm -hmm. power rates have gone up and these discoms are either in bad financial state or are unwilling to pass on the cost to consumer due to political pressure of those state governments. That has resulted in load shedding as a way to curtail demand which went up due to a completely unseasonal once in a 50 year kind of weather environment. The second is, yes, there is a coal supply shortage and coal is supplied for power plants primarily by the railways but the railways cannot do it on their own. If there is demand, only then can they. So railways cannot supply on their own. So because states and state dis generators are not getting uh, wanting extra coal, coal prices have gone up. It will be wrong to blame the railways. And the railways have responded uh, mm -hmm. very, very well and in quick time. And finally, the third major point that I want to do and which I had taken down is that as far as the current situation is concerned, there are several private sector power plants which are not producing power, which have been mothballed due to financial issues that happened over the years due to the economic slowdown. It would have been quite easy, relatively easy to get them switched on. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they are being left idle and we do not have an answer as yet to that uh, you... situation. In are you saying, yes, therefore, sir. Siddharth Zarabi, that it is basically the dramatic increase in demand at this time because of uh, 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 the, the energy requirements? And is it a financially precarious condition in which many of these state electricity boards and discoms find themselves that is primarily responsible for the crisis? A discom with two arms tied and one leg tied suddenly has to deal with 14% increase in demand mm -hmm. and a state government which doesn't want more metering and a state government which does not want to touch holy cows of those who are given free power and state governments and election uh, reasons across the political spectrum which want more power, you can only uh, get expect them to do that much of a dance. Unfortunately, they cannot do disco with all three limbs tied. You know, that is a question I want to raise with both the politicians. Rohan Gupta, you first. You know, there, there is a looming power crisis and as we saw in this election, every political party in Punjab and in Uttar Pradesh uh, in their manifesto said, we will give free power. That, you know, at one level you talk of a power crisis and you know that the discoms are bleeding and yet you talk of free power at election time. The thing is, you it is impossible at the moment to see many of these discoms and state electricity boards becoming in the near future financially viable. I agree with you, Rajdeep, and this is the problem with these new parties like Aam Admi Party and all. 
They no, it's true of all parties. It's true of all parties when it comes to free power. I will answer your question. So even if you promise something free, there has to be management after that. It's not that if you see all the Congress government, even in Delhi, mm -hmm. the power subsidies were always there, but we managed it well. Delhi was a surplus state when the Congress was in power with more than 60,000 crore rupees of surplus. Now today you see what is the situation of Delhi. So the issue here is not uh, Rajdeep giving something free when obviously there is a particular class of society which, which is deprived and something is to be done. Yeah, you should be, but that it, it should be supported by the management around it. Mm. What I'm trying to tell you here is there was a trailer to this government in October 2021. Maybe due to other reasons, there was a shortage. Only four days power supply was there. I think if they should have learnt out of that. If this kind of situation is going to emerge, what is going to be then planning? IMD had given this warning clear cut this time that this govern this this summer is going to be the hottest. I think government should have planned in advance, taken mm -hmm. states in confidence, maybe organized meetings and all. And I think we, we wouldn't have this uh, the, the, seen this kind of situation today. Blaming uh, you know state governments and all. Mm -hmm. I think that's not correct. It is a you primary know, responsibility of central government to ensure that even if there is increasing mm -hmm. power demand. They have to meet. Now you just made a statement of Coal India saying that we increase our output by 25%. The objective of Coal India, of central government, is not increasing the production to meet the demand. Okay. Whatever is the demand, your government should be capable. There is no shortage. To the demand. You know, the fact though is, uh, GBL Narsimha Rao, that this is a moment where the ministry at the centre needs to in some way be in constant communication with state governments. Now, I could be mistaken and maybe Siddharth can correct me, but what I am told by state governments, opposition rule state governments, is that there has been very little communication between Delhi and state capitals. It could be, I could Rajiv, be mistaken. May I come in? Yes, yes, Siddharth. Rajiv, may I come in? Yes. Very quickly. There have been a spate of meetings, uh, some of them known, some of them unknown, and I really cannot add value there. But there are two major points. There is no coal shortage. Blended coal has become expensive. Indonesian coal is expensive. If your pocket is empty and you want to eat at a five star, there will be problems. So uh, I think, and let's let's face it, a bulk of India's power is consumed and a bulk of India's power is produced in the state sector. It is also true that in the last seven, eight years, we have invested in solar and renewable. But if you go around asking, has 20, 30, 40,000 of additional capacity been created in thermal, which is our uh, mainstay and will remain for the next 30, 40 years. I think there's a policy mistake also that has happened. This climate thing we have taken of ourselves and we now have at the highest temperatures people suffering. Yet I end by saying situation has improved in the last three days and if the weather gods permit, we might still have some relief in the week ahead. I'm going to be joined in a moment by Vinayak Chatterjee and Harry Daul for solution. But Rajiv. one final point to you, uh, GVL Narsimha Rao, because when I look at the numbers, the fact is BJP ruled states are also suffering as Congress ruled states are. So let's not make this about parties and politics. Power cuts across the opposition government divide or should cut across. Power belongs to all states, all citizens. Yeah, Rajdeep, as I told you, here are the numbers. The central sector power generation is only 99,000 megawatts. The states do even more, 1,5,000 megawatts. And, and the private sector is, uh, the total of these two together, 195,000, 1,95,000 megawatts. So certainly it's not the government of India that is producing or government central uh, mm -hmm. generation companies that are generating all the power. They account for less than a fourth of the total generation of power. And as regards uh, imported coal prices have been gone up, while your in indigenous production of coal has increased, you certainly, the prices have gone up internationally and somebody has to foot the bill. And you can't expect the central government to foot all the bill. Right. Okay. So, and central, and there is no communication required. There has been a communication between the center and the states, but it's a, it's, 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 it's obvious. Everybody knows at what price you can buy imported coal and what is the landed cost of imported coal. Let me. Their un unwillingness to foot the bill pass on possibly the, the cost to the consumers. And this government has made massive efforts in restructuring the power sector. Under Atmanirbhar Bharat package itself, we have Sir. lent out nearly 1.3 lakh crores to the discoms okay. to come I'm out of their to come out of Sir, their. the fact uh, is that the discoms are still facing a crisis. Relevant. The fact is, discoms at the moment are still facing a huge financial crisis. I want to leave yeah. it there. 
We've heard the political Chatterjee. arguments. Let's turn to our expert. Vinayak Chatterjee is infrastructure sector expert, chairman, National Infrastructure Council at CII. Harry Dowell is a long-standing director general, Independent Power Producer Association of India. I want you to give solutions, Vinayak Chatterjee. You've heard the politicians. Uh, there is still those who will say this is not, there isn't a coal shortage. There is a coal, there is a power management issue at the moment, plus the demand has increased, plus there's politics being played out. You provide us the solutions, Vinayak Chatterjee, today. I, I, I will. And thank you, thank you for having me on the discussion, Razi. I think much data, much discussion, much heat has been uh, thrown around. Let me share three perspectives with you. One, in management jargon, mm -hmm. this whole uh, event is what would be called a white swan event, which means that it has occurred in the past, has reasonable frequency, has medium probability of happening, and is entirely preventable. So this is called a white swan event. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one, and therefore there are learnings to it, and I'll come to the solutions. The second issue to discuss or to present is that there is no one reason. There is no one reason, as you've seen in the discussions, from uh, coal India's shortage of production to economic rebound to unprecedented summer heat to high price of imported coal to sharp spike in railway rates demand to the dismal situation of discoms there are seven eight nine ten and political largest and giveaways there are about 10 wheels within wheels that are all moving together so this is a confluence of circumstances that have happened mm -hmm. and finally the perspective is what is simply called jaws of the alligator, which is that the demand, as uh, has been said earlier, has been growing at 14%, clearly seen, whereas coal output in FY22 over FY21 has grown by only 4%. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the nub of the problem, that there is the jaws of the alligator. Demand has far outstripped coal supply for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Now, you asked me for solutions. Mm -hmm. So since... I think the important thing is, one, these events like these enable one to talk about what the country needs to do or should have done. And that really is the solution looking forward. As the saying goes, when the tide runs low, you know who's swimming naked. And therefore, let me outline for you some of the issues that should have required greater focus, greater resolution, and still can be done. One is the diversification of our energy basket. We can't have a nation where 70 to 75 percent of power generation decade after decade is only by coal and now gradually, hopefully, replaced by, to some extent, by renewables. Mm -hmm. We have neglected hydro hugely as a country. We have not made progress on the nuclear civil deal after 2008. And we have let gas completely escape attention in terms of it being an equally viable energy source. That's one. So diversifying our energy base is a solution. The excessive focus on renewables has led, led to taking our eyes off the ball so far as thermal coal is concerned. And therefore, instead of this general mood of, shall we say, you know, uh, global warming and etc., etc., we have taken, we have moved very fast away from coal thermal. It, the, the move should have been far more gradual in terms of allowing some fresh investments to come up right. in a graded manner uh, so that the economy did not feel the shocks. Uh, coal India, I think the two years of COVID depressed economic activity and the lack of demand, as has been said by the political uh, people on the panel, have led to a certain inertia in coal India's production. It should have reached 800, 850 uh, million tons, where even the coal minister in parliament has said that the target is to be 1200 million by uh, 23, 24. So if the target is 1200 million by 23, 24, mm -hmm. Surely, Coal India can't be operating at the level but, of 750 or whatever they're operating at now. The trajectory of coal output increase has certainly slowed down mm -hmm. and the jaws of the alligator have suddenly caught it off guard. But essentially, finally, you're calling for a diversification uh, of resources, right? You're calling for a diversification of our energy yes. resources. So we are not dependent, in a sense, anymore on a single source for our power needs. Am I correct? Correct, correct, Rajni, but also India has strengths in hydro. We have huge untapped potential, which we have been talking for decades, but it, it, it does not receive political and bureaucratic attention, unfortunately. 
And secondly, is the civil nuclear power deal, which I think the, the Manmohan Singh government staked its reputation mm -hmm. on that deal. And we move very close to India ramping up its nuclear production, mm -hmm. which today, by the way, the rest of the world is warming up again after the Ukraine crisis. Uh, we need to do something quickly to focus again on, on, on nuclear. We have to reform the power distribution sector. It is the tail that wags the dog of the power sector. But the government claims the, they've done that. The let, me, let me take that. No, no. But the government claims it is reforming the power distribution sector. You heard uh, GVL Narsimha Rao claiming that this has been one of the achievements of the government. And the fact is, the jury is out on that. Because when I look at the state of the discom company, they're still struggling. So while, while the I, government I, is, I, has sorry, the right the intentions... Party. The government. the government has announced scheme after scheme of right. trying to motivate discoms to reform. But we have passed the stage of motivation. I think the use of the term surgical strike actually describes the amount of focused attention and decisive political what, action. What, what would that surgical strike be? What would that surgical strike be? The surgical strike really would be to actually force the discoms to look at private participation in their operations. That does not necessarily mean selling the family silver. Mm -hmm. It just means there are many options from management operation to franchisees to outright privatization to even insisting that like we are doing Nal Se Jal, mm -hmm. that all households will have water by 2024 or 100% houses will have electricity. Why can't we have a scheme that 100% will have uh, smart meters? So basically, this, the time has come when after three decades of waiting for the DISCOM staff and the mm -hmm. DISCOM itself to reform itself, the time has gone. Okay, so the surgical strike would mean a, a slew of options. Mm -hmm. There are options across the spectrum of how to get private sector into the management of the electricity distribution. So that you is you, what Harry I would call the to that. strike. And that Will that, Harry Dow, would, would, that, would that be a, a solution? Let Harry, Harry respond who's worked with independent power producers because the the track record again there is a mixed one it's not as if independent power producers have stepped up to the plate to ensure that the power crisis doesn't loom in the way it is at the moment you know i would like to start off with the point that was raised about surgical strike by you rajdeep hmm? i would say three things rescue the discounts rescue coal india and rescue recording the, in the, progress the power producers. okay those are the three things and the point is I think the government of the day is on top of the job. They're doing a damn good job today. They had a meeting. And my suspicion is that the meeting they had is going to have something like the following. There'll be a financial restructuring of the debts of discoms. Second, they will should be, and I hope there will be, a restructuring and protection of all power producing assets in the country, private or public. If they are having a debt problem from discoms, they should be protected by way of a moratorium. This moratorium should be for a short phase of three years or five years, and it should be set off against the amount that the discoms owe these generating companies. So banks can come in and work it out. In fact, I would say REC and Power Finance Corporation, which are under the direct control of the Ministry of Power, can tomorrow. do it ASAP. The third thing is that you need to appreciate that coal india is being blasted left right and center for this that and the other the fact of the matter remains that the whole system has to become more efficient and i agree with vinayak on the point that we need to have private management wherever necessary mm -hmm. to improve the efficiency and to get rid of the inefficiencies about supply about mining etc etc looking at the situation as it is today mm -hmm. i would say that we are in serious trouble not just from what you see in the next few days, but also the weather forecast of the El Nino and the uh, and the and the other phenomenon that's taking so place. So what what would be the immediate solution? Because at the moment the government solution is being to tell the states go ahead import uh, coal. The states more or less are saying, look, we can't import it at the prices, and we are being asked to uh, import the coal. Please understand, it's four months to get the coal in. That's not going to work immediately, right? What you need to do is get. The, the assets which are already there, which are stranded or stopped or stuck in some form or the other, because the, fa the fact that discoms are not paying them, can be immediately started. And since there is coal availability, okay, mm -hmm. I think that should, that should be the immediate solution. That should be the immediate focus. And I think it is, because I believe today uh, the Honorable Home Minister and the Power Minister had some meetings with some people to try and get this off the ground. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a fantastic thing. I mean, this government is on the job and is taking care of a very 
very crazy situation of high temperatures and and the fact that uh, you know in spite of the fact that you're moving 400 500 600 million tons of coal uh, you're still facing a crisis okay also the fact that demand has gone up uh, someone told me very interestingly that the delhi peak has shifted from the normal uh, five o'clock in the evening to eight o'clock has gone up from five o'clock to two in the morning because everyone's got an air conditioning air conditioner in the house so they need power uh, you know, for a much longer period and, and 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 a lot more. Right. The other thing that worries me is you are stopping industry from getting coal. That's aluminium, steel, cement. These are all critical for infrastructure. So what are we going to do with that? I think that's another concern which we need to flag. But immediately, as I said, you need to have intervention from the central government to bail out the discounts, bail out the 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 IPPs. Who are getting wiped out because of the the but as you said but that could again result in a vicious cycle that won't resolve the problem but that will at least you're saying temporary is a temporary solution what we are eventually it's going to lead a temporary is solution, but it gives you three to five years right within which you add the capacity which vinayak is talking about okay and he's right that we are not adding enough thermal capacity in this country we don't have gas as an alternative as, a, as at a viable price and we have no way of taking that forward Okay, let so me I think leave, that's what we need to do. Let me leave it there, gentlemen. Uh, we've had a discussion that I hope sheds more light than heat in the time that we li live in. And I think what we need is more light, really, than heat. And that might, in a way at least, if the temperatures drop a bit, reduce some of that power demand. But Vinayak Chatterjee, Harry Dowell, I appreciate your joining me here tonight with your solutions and giving us, in a way, a non-partisan approach to an issue that unfortunately has again got caught in a political blame game. The power crisis in the country, the real issues that matter, and hopefully the news without the noise.